where do you think they're coming from? I know youth is a big push for a lot of people because that's their future, right? Some people struggle with it. Where do you think the, um, you've been able to get them from? I think a lot of that is my marketing goal at um, <laughs> Bowling Alley Marketing. Right. Yeah. Let me get the word out. Yeah, um, thank you for the shout out. <laughs> I'm just saying because I've never been able to do that. I've always tried, yeah. always thought I could, never could get it done. I'm good at some things, but I've just come to realize that I'm not. So let the people who know how to do it, do it better. Thank you so much for coming on today, Renee. I'm really looking forward to this one. It's going to be a great conversation. You know, I always love speaking with you. So for the people who don't have the pleasure of meeting you yet, tell us who you are in the center that you're with. You okay. I Thank you for asking me to do this, Forrest. This is great. My name is Renee Talkington. I own J. Lane's Bowling Center in Douglasville, PA. I bought it in 2012, and we've been running it ever since, putting all our heart and soul into it. So it's kind of what we're doing. Yeah, I'll say heart and soul and a whole lot more. But I never do anything halfway. Right. I do all the way or don't do it, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's let's start at the beginning because I, I know a little bit more about your story than most, but I think it's a cool story because I love kind of seeing people maybe start from outside the business, see the value in it, especially you coming from a numbers background and saying, you know what, this is a good business. Let's dive in. Mm -hmm. Walk me through that story a little bit about how you got into the industry. Okay. Well, I was, I still kind of am an accountant. Mm -hmm. I was a property management accountant for a very good company and I was in the whole accounting world for 25 years, working all those long hours and, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> doing the grind and getting the deadlines and all that mm -hmm. stuff. I worked for a great company in King of Prussia. They um, owned shopping centers and malls. And I was really into the property management part, which I really loved. I loved having to like do the financial statements for a shopping mall. I mean, that's great for a woman, you know? I'm like, I see the sales of the stores and right. it was just very exciting and it was never complacent. It was always moving. It was always a moving target. Things were always happening. Leases were always different. So I got all that experience. And, but after 25 years of that, you get a little burned out. Right. And I thought, you know, let me try a different avenue. And I've been in the bowling world for since I was eight years old. I bowled at J Lanes, which is the center mm -hmm. I, I purchased. So it's kind of a goosebump type thing because you like right. you, where you grew up and you saw all your friends when you were young and your relatives. My mom's the oldest out of 10, so I have 28 cousins. Mm -hmm. Wow. So a lot of them were there when I was there and it was fun. So I was bowling with the current owner of the center on a Friday night league. And he was like, I'm gonna close the doors. I'm like, what? No, please. <laughs> yeah, no, you're not. So yeah, so that was in 2000. And I'm like, well, who owns the building? Cause I knew he didn't own the building. He's like, oh, the original owner. I'm like, oh, Barb, I remember her, you know? And I said, let me get my husband on that. So he went and called her, made her an offer. And of course they all, everybody thinks their building's worth much more than it is. And it, of course. Present company, not excluded on that. <laughs> I'm right in that boat. Right. And so we talked to her and she turned us down and she made a deal with him for another year. And so now 2011, I'm laid off again, just because the company I worked for downsized, sold some properties, didn't need as many people. So now I'm really at time to work on maybe getting in. So I'm still bowling with them. I'm still talking to them, still trying to kind of work the deal. Right. And then it came like the spring of 2012. He was like, that's it. I'm shutting the doors. I'm like, no, let me work on it. He's like, you don't want to buy a bowling alley. I'm like, just let me work on it. So we did. We worked on it. In the meantime, my husband has like 16 rental properties that he's working mm. on. So going into the process, I'm proficient with leases and, and contracts and things like that. Yeah. I'm not a legal person. I stay in my lane. But, you know, I did ask, I got from the other owner, I got all the financials and I looked at them, but bowling with him and still bowling in that center made me hear all the bowlers express what was wrong with it mm -hmm. and what I needed to fix. 
Right. And that was kind of helpful when you listen to them and you're like, it needs a snack bar. It needs access, better access to the bowling, to the bar. It needs mm -hmm. it, it's so many things that kind of weren't too expensive to do. And they were right. So, you know, and so I, I knew I could make it work. So, mm -hmm. of course, going through all the process. And the funny thing was, is we had no contract for like, I took it over because he was going to shut the door. I'm in Reno bowling a national tournament and I'm on the phone with my lawyer, my husband, her, her lawyer, and just trying to make this all work. It was like May 6th and I turned around. We finally did like a verbal agreement. I flew back on the 17th and I took it over on May 20th with no agreement, nothing. Wow. Just going in on a handshake, some trust. Yeah, because once she, she shut those doors, you got to get those league bowlers back. And that's hard. There was a fire mm -hmm. at our center before we bought it in 2006, and it was down for a year, which mm -hmm. was some of how they lost some of their league bowlers because it was mm -hmm. shut down for a year. They went other places. Right. Yeah. Some of them never come back. Right. It's, just, it's hard. Yeah, as soon once as you lose, lose that them. habit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once that habit takes hold somewhere else, yeah, they move on. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. we, you know, we did it. We, we finally, in all honesty, we didn't make settlement till October 12th. Oh, that, wow. The right. agreement was done in June. And then we finally, so, I mean, I'm paying payroll the first couple of weeks out of my personal bank account because wow. I, yeah. I had no bank statement. I had no tax paper, a Department of State paper to take to the bank to get a checking yeah. account. It was like, oh, here you go, guys. Right. Anything to get it done. <laughs> the good thing was there was only like five employees at the time. Needless to say, there's 15 at least now. So it's, right. it's a little easier, but. Yeah. And it, it sounds like you've made some major improvements along the way with, uh, you know, the laser tag, you know, buying the building next door, mm -hmm. adding a full restaurant. Like, take me through a little bit of that. I, I guess maybe that's some of the stuff that the bowlers, you overheard them were saying you wanted and, and you went. Yes, the snack bar was the first thing. And we didn't even own the building yet at that point. My husband had the snack bar up mm -hmm. by, it was September, probably before the league bowlers came in. He was cut a hole. He moved the pro shop up, cut a hole in the wall so they could get to the bar and then put the snack bar where the pro shop used to be. And he mm -hmm. did all that in like a couple months. It was great. It was, and then we had to, because of the fire in 2006, they didn't upgrade the fire suppression system in the bar. So they couldn't cook. They couldn't use the deep fryer. They couldn't use the grill. They couldn't use anything back there because it wasn't brought up to code. So we put some money into that and we brought that up to code. That was one of the things I knew because I'm like, you know, food is where the profit margin is going to be. So let's get the food going. And we did mm -hmm. that. So I was happy. Mm -hmm. And that, that fire suppression system was paid off in the first year. Like, oh, yeah. no <laughs> right. There's a no brainer. Yeah. It yeah, well, I mean, anytime you have, have food, it's going to increase, you know, the people, the time that people are there, right? Instead of them yeah. having to bowl and then leave to go somewhere else to eat, now they can stay and bowl an extra game or two and spend money on food. Absolutely. And mm. part of my other background is I bartended on the weekends every so often. Mm. I bartended more in the early, in my BC before mm. children. <laughs> and then I bartended later. My parents owned the bar when I was a kid. My mother bartended a long time. It was the bar that I knew, the restaurant food part, I did not. Mm. And I was fortunate I got a real good cook from my Cisco rep. He's like, oh, I know mm. a guy who can help you out for a little bit. I'm like, okay, cool. And he really was. He's like, he'd come in and go, Renee, you need to do this. You need a warming table. You need to do it. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. And I did what he, mm -hmm. I, I knew I didn't know. And yeah. I think that's part of the success is getting. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Mm -hmm. Getting, listening to people, listening to the bowlers. I mean, some of them, their ideas are not doable. You just, mm -hmm. you can't. Just some of right. them, I, I get they're helpful. They're trying, but it's just not something you can really do for whatever reason, structural wise or money wise or whatever yeah. the reason is, it's just not doable. But some of the things that they do suggest, you go, okay, yeah, that works. That mm -hmm. really works. So, and that's, and that was part of it. We put up ceiling fans. The one guy just, he's like, and it helped all the way around. It helped with the humidity for our approaches. It helps keep the cool air down and the hot, it just, it, it helped a lot. It was another mm -hmm. thing that was well worth it. 
And it's little things you do like that that are, are great. So, you know, we started making all those changes and we started building the base up. And, you know, we started, I worked real hard on trying to get, I still bowl avidly. So I'd be around tournaments and talk to people and they would ask me questions and I'd be like, yeah, we've done this and we've done that. And, and you know, a lot of people would come back. And we've grown our league so much there since we, we did the takeover. So it's been a great, we're very league based even now, but we, you know, we still have the open bowling a lot more on just the weekends. We have a few lanes, but a lot of our leagues in the winter time are just full. I have yeah. Monday nights, 22 teams, and I only have a 24 lane house. So right. Monday nights, 22 teams. Tuesday night this year just grew from six teams to 11. So now they take the whole one side. I have a split house for those of you mm -hmm. who don't know. It's 12 lanes on one side and 12 lanes on the other. It's perfect though. Yeah, it's I love the split house. I do. My mm -hmm. service counter can see everything going on. There's right. no, we got it. You know, mm -hmm. that young one brought in a beer that we don't even sell at the bar. We got them. <laughs> like, where's your ID? Where'd right. you sell that here? Mm -hmm. It's great. So we, you know, we're fortunate. We like it. So we got Tuesday night. We have probably only four lanes open for open bowling now. Wednesday night only has like four lanes open. Mm -hmm. uh, Thursday night is up to 20 teams. And mm -hmm. then Friday night is full 24 teams. Only a four man team, so they get done by the time Glow Bowling starts. So, yeah, my youth league just started a couple weeks ago. I'm up 20 bowlers in that league as well. So, mm -hmm. mostly little guy, little ones. So, that's, I mean, the scholarship league grew, but we've had, we've seen probably eight young ones come that we, that we you know, we didn't have before, which mm -hmm. is just, Great. Um, yeah, where do you think they're, they're coming from? What's that? Where do you think they're coming from? I know youth is a big push for a lot of people because that's their future, right? But some people struggle with it. Where do you think that you've been able to get them from? I think a lot of that is my my marketing people at um, <laughs> Bowling Alley Marketing. <laughs> when they get the word out. Yeah, um, thank you for the shout out. <laughs> I'm just saying because I've, I've never been able to do that. I've always tried, yeah. always thought I could never could get it done. I just, I'm good at some things, but I, no, I've just come to realize that I'm not. So let the people who know how to do it better. And I mean, that's just everything I've learned from being in the community. In the beginning, I knew a gentleman who was on our association. Uh, his name was Mike Italia. And he used to say to me, got to go to Bowl Expo, got to go to Bowl Expo, got to get in the BPAA. And I got, he got, and I'm like, okay. And I listened to him and I went to my first bowl expo, just in awe, just, just mm -hmm. fascinated with the people and how they want to help you, how they have such good ideas. And I get it. Like what works in Florida doesn't work in Pennsylvania because of our seasonal weather. Mm -hmm. You know, we just like, we, just, like I said, Saturday was beautiful. So it wasn't a mm -hmm. good day in the bowling alley. You know, right. the rain dance didn't work that day. You try. But mm -hmm. it didn't work. So it's, you know, it's hard. It mm -hmm. was, it was a slow day, but they still have good ideas that can work their tournaments or whatever they have. It's great. And the smart buy programs are, they're just amazing. I, they do all your negotiating for you. I mean, oh, it's yeah. great. <laughs> they do. Right. They it do pays for the whole program for your, all your dues. It's the Pepsi alone. Oh my gosh, yes. My first check pays for my pays for that and some pays for mm -hmm. my, my dues. Um, you know, they negotiate your, your credit card one is the best because they would always go. I deal with four other banks because of my husband's rental properties. And he was like, you know, they always want my credit card business. Oh, of course. yeah. And I give them my numbers and they go, we can't match that. Call me when you can. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's kind of, uh, it, that was great too. And to learn, and you really get a, a lot of friendship outside mm -hmm. of Pennsylvania. You, you really, you look yeah. forward to seeing them now every year at Bowl Expo and hanging out or having dinner, or, you know, it, it's, and talking about things that work and what didn't mm -hmm. work. I mean, things we, everything we tried didn't work. I mean, some of the short term Legs don't work at my place, and I don't know why, because mm. they seem to be successful in other places. Right. 
but my long t- term legs are working. So I just hmm. go with that. I mean, that's yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, less hassle for you. It is, it's, but it, it's worth the hassle. Every bit of it is worth the hassle. Mm. So the big thing I always say is my husband, who had 16 rental properties, my husband who doesn't bowl, he doesn't drink, but he put up six of his rental properties in collateral so I could buy my bowling alley. Mm-hmm. And I'll just never yeah. forget the look on his face when I said, I want to buy a bowling alley because I'm that accountant that doesn't take risk. And he's like, you what? I want to buy a bowling alley, honey. Please. <laughs> he did it. Thank goodness. Yeah. Right. That's- you knew. Yeah. You knew you had it in you. I just knew. I, I can't ex- even just with running the numbers, there was something inside of me that said, you know how to do this. Mm-hmm. You can make the numbers grow. And, you know, we've tripled the revenue there. And then, so- mm-hmm. and, but I always say that's not the successful part. You can increase your revenue. You can increase your press, your prices and right. that, that'll increase your revenue, but we've increased our net income by percentages that just are crazy. And, and that's the accountant in me that gets into the books and starts yeah. cutting costs where you give up quality, but right. there's, you know, you look for utility contracts, you look for anything that you can do to try to cut down on some of the, the costs that, mm. that still keep your customers very happy. But let's stay there actually a little bit. What are some ways or some spots that you've looked for or- you know, maybe what's a framework you look for of where do I think I can cut costs? I think that'd be really helpful for some people, especially someone of your background. Well, I go through my income statement and I look Mm -hmm. at my expenses and I just start from the top and I start looking down. Um, Of course, the first one on there is advertising. And that's one I used to, I will admit, I used to try to cut that one. Mm -hmm. But I've learned, but I've also learned too, you got to do the right kind of advertising. Some things, you know, you can get the coupons and you can get the people in my center. Anyway, I'll talk about mine, but they're not continual customers. They're coupon chasers. They're only going to come right. in with a coupon and you're never going to see them again. That's, that's okay, but that's not that's not advertising. That's just giving away something. Discounting, yeah. Yeah, that's all that is. So, but I start there and I just go down the income statement and they, the bank service cheap charges with, you know, credit cards and stuff like that. You, you just start going down. There's certain things you can't do anything about. Uh, depreciation is depreciation, but that, that you can also work out too. Cause when you make a major improvement, like we put in laser tag in 2006, when we mm-hmm. took over the space, cause to our dismay, when we were negotiating, buying the place, she put in a tenant over there and it did not work out very well. The tenant didn't last long. It's even in the bowling world, you could be a bowler and not be good at running a bowling center. You could be a hairdresser and not be good at running a, your own salon. And right. That's what happened. Yeah. Okay. So we took it over and, and put laser tag in. And so in that one, you, there's certain items you can think about depreciating. And of course, we depreciate it all. That gets depreciated, which is great because yeah. that's, that's a no cash expense that helps your net it lowers your net income for tax purposes, which is great. Right. You go through a lot of anything else you can, you think you can look at, you got food expense, look at your vendors, you know, the Cisco contracts are great. They have other vendors out there and your food and beverages, anything there. I've tried to, you know, to see where some one vendor or something might be better from a different vendor. You just kind of, mm. you got to research it. It's a little bit of time, mm. but. It's worth it, I think, in the end. Oh, yeah. you Especially if you're doing a lot of volume on it. Right. But I think the hard thing is with me, I mean, I have my financial statements at my fingertips because of being mm-hmm. an accountant. You know, and I know that's just that's an added thing that I have. Not everybody has that. And I've talked to people at Bowl Expo because they yeah. talked about their disgruntled accountant. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm sorry. I can't help yeah. you. With that. <laughs> right. Or what's an income statement? <laughs> it, yes. And I get it. But just go through your bills. Just if, mm-hmm. if you don't have an income statement, just go through your paid invoice file because yeah. there's a good, that's a good way to see what you're paying or your bank mm-hmm. statement as well. What goes out of it automatically. And there, there's um, some good utility contracts that I'm, you know, I'm able, I was able to do with gas mm-hmm. and electric is one of our biggest utilities and trash. You know, I've been through four trash vendors till I finally found the right one. 
trial and error. It really, yeah. it really was. So, yeah, that's kind of how I try to look at my net income. You know, I it's been a challenge because payroll's going up because I have to employ more right. people. It's a no-brainer. So yeah. it's a good start, though. To try, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. So look to try to reduce costs, and then um, I'm I'm guessing you probably have maybe some a framework or some thoughts about increased uh, expenses that come up. Like, should I buy this or should I not? It's probably a big mm -hmm. piece too. Like, not just what you did spend, but uh, what you didn't spend is probably just as big of the uh, the profit equation. Correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. you want to look at that too as well and see. Is there a project you're going to do in the future that maybe you need to hold on to some money for? And you don't want to spend it. I, mm -hmm. I technically don't, you know, you can just build, I build on a money market account. I just kind of put it over there knowing that, you know, maybe I'm doing this, you know, in the, within a year and I might need this, or I'm not going to do it within a year and I don't know when I'm going to do it, but I need to put mm -hmm. some of it aside and you kind of right. get it out of the, the operating account. So Sometimes it's out of sight, out of mind, so the bank statement yeah. comes and goes, oh, that's right, I have that. <laughs> you hide it from yourself. Yeah. I had it from Chuck all the time as rental properties. Like, I forgot about that. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. here we have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, is, is there something that you do, like, as far as, like, a, a payback period? Like, how fast you can pay something back? Or when you're, uh, like, you're going through, you know, potentially a, a big capital expense right now, what do you do to try to figure out, is this worth it or not? What's, what's your mental calculation on that? Well, you're trying to get your, your return on investment is really what you're mm -hmm. trying to do. So you, it's basically you do projections. You project on how much more income, whatever, you, like we did it for laser tag as well. Like how much more income we think we're going to produce. And mm -hmm. then over time, how will that income pay off how much you had to invest into it? Laser tag was a little longer than what I expected, but again, that's because I didn't market it well in the very beginning. Right. So I was hoping to get like a three, three and a half return, and it was more like five. Okay. So three, three and a half is usually what you're shooting for? Yes. It, it all depends on how big it is. Something as big as laser tag that we did in, in 2016. Yeah, I was... Mm -hmm. I really wanted that quicker, but it took it a while to get out there, and mm -hmm. it took us time to learn it as well. You, you, yeah. Everybody in our center never dealt with laser tag before. And there really wasn't anybody real close to us that had it. So it was kind of, it was at least a no. five minute drive to the next laser mm. tag place. Yeah. So, but I did have nice friends, with, yeah, I had friends in the, the BPAA that I talked to that kind of helped. One of them even had a seminar at his place about it too. And. Mm. Same problem I did. He's like, I'm going to admit we did not market this well in the beginning, and right, and that's that was one of the lessons I learned. So the birthday parties grew from last year to this year so far for laser tag. I think it's 22 percent at this point, just because of marketing. Oh, wow. Yeah, just putting the idea out there for people. Yes. Yeah, so I guess for the bigger ones, it might be you know three and a half to five. For the smaller ones, maybe three to three and a half. And this is years payback. Just yes. to be clear. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. So yeah. Three. Right. Like the one we're looking at now for just the software upgrade and the kiosk and everything, that's most likely going to be less than two years. Okay. Because that's not a really big expense. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. big expense, yeah. but it's not as big as some of the other ones. So you're looking at probably, you know, two within two years. Okay. Yeah. I see. So yeah. So that's always the thing. It's like, sure, you, you get the payback, but how long you got to wait for it? I like that rule of thumb is the smaller ones, maybe, you know, two to th medium ones, you know, three and a half to five, maybe the really big ones, you know, five or six or something like that, I guess it just depends on the size. Right. Well, like when in 2016, after we did the laser tag, we put in a brand new arcade, which was our machines, as opposed to we didn't before. They were just kind of left over from the old owner. Mm -hmm. We went and we purchased our own through Betson and it's kind of nice because now they're paid off and now I just swap out two i'm swapping out two next month maybe three now i'm swapping out three next month and getting new ones in it's kind of nice that you have that now that original investment that you definitely got your money back on uh, mm -hmm. and that was another thing we looked at was the arcade and that was yeah that was a biggie that was more than i expected we were going to get out of that which was a quicker return on investment that one was quicker than i thought so i had laser tech mm -hmm. that took 
longer and I had the arcade that took quicker. So, and they both yeah, were implemented about the same time. So they were washing mm-hmm. each other out. Uh, those, yeah, that arcade is such a nice profit center. It is, yeah. but I don't have the space. And I mean, we're thinking about that and that's in the future. And you let me know when you want me to go to the future and I'll tell you, but <laughs> that's something else that's, that we think about because we only have room for like 12 games. I don't have room for, mm-hmm. each. I, I tried to think about a redemption, but I just, even with putting a redemption locker in, I still don't have the space. I mean, even with a couple of games, it's just, I have to do the best with the space that I have. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. And so before we go to the future, I'd love to hear just a little bit more about maybe some of the stuff that's working for you guys today, whether it's, you know, types of leagues or different promotions or maybe, you know, what you're doing on the food and beverage side. Yeah. What do you guys see working really well for you today that stands out to you? Well, what we see the food and beverage is definitely where we see the growth. And again, due to our marketing, our tavern is doing much better. It's no longer just a bowling alley tavern there's outside people coming in and it's just you know yes it was awesome i have one of my bartenders that's been here since like the very beginning and she's funny because she was like it's amazing renee to see the transition that took place from 11 years ago when you know on friday night it was barely any bowlers and it was just bowling people coming in for drinks and now there's you know, we're bowling on Friday night because I still bowl on Friday night. Fortunately, prior owner is no longer with us, but, you know, I was still, I still bowl on Friday nights and I walk into bar and I've got three quarters of the bar full and they're not bowlers. So yeah. <laughs> that's what's working and it's mm-hmm. for food and beverages. And we try to make sure I talk to young people. The nice thing is I have a 21 year old daughter, so I kind of pick her brain on what's good mm. out there it's not yeah um, again, like, what do they want yes because mm-hmm. i don't know you know sure. you get to the old, one? and you have you have two sets of customers you're trying to appease because you have bowlers who want this type of food and beverage and then you have open bowlers who want this type of food and beverage right. mm-hmm. so what we try to do is a combination of both because what you find is a lot of bowlers don't want too much food that they have to eat with their hands unless it's before right. or after bowling. They don't, you know, the Dutch platters sell very well because the toothpicks, they put the toothpicks in, they eat the cheese and the, it's, yeah, but that, they go more on one night compared to the other. It all depends on the bowlers. Mm-hmm. So it's quite a mixture of trying to put this all together. And it's just basically talking to the bartenders, talking to the servers, talk, you know, talking to the bowlers because Mm-hmm. They, you know, what they want. They love weekly specials so they can get something different off the menu. Yeah. Like, you know, we'll run something different for a change or we'll make a buffalo chicken grilled cheese sandwich or something that we don't normally have on the menu. And they love it. They just, mm-hmm. they like that different change. So that kind that's, that kind of works. And then, like I said, on the alcohol side is talking to the other people. It, it's, it's hard. It, 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 you got to put the effort into it and really think about what they need. And it's hard even getting some of your employees trained that way because mm. you'll have the ones that work during the week that work with the league bowlers and then the one on the weekends and, you know, you got the ones on the weekend going, hey, they're asking, you know, for this. Can we get this in? And, you know, I got my league bartenders going, I never sell that. I'm like, well, you're in a whole different world. Yeah, <laughs> right. Two different customers. Yeah. It is. And, and that's what's kind of, I think, a little unique to our place or the bowling alley industry. Mm-hmm. You can have, yeah. you got to do this two different avenues. And so, marrying the two. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, that's a great, yeah, that's a great observation. And I'd say that seems to be, you know, if I had one through line of your, your journey and, and uh, for your success, it sounds like, you know, the humility to listen to other people, listen to your customers, listen to experts and take the ideas, try them. Not all of them work, but a lot of them do. And just keep those one. That seems to be something that, you know, uh, a big strength of yours. Yes. Yeah, so I try to listen. I'm mm-hmm. not, I don't know at all. I was taught that a long time ago. Yeah. And then, I was taught a long time ago. I don't know at all. My CFO, <laughs> my CFO used to give me the greatest thing because Renee, you're trying to get there this way, get there this way. Right. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. you're going the long way. Don't we? Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay. 
But yeah, no, you have to. And I know sometimes people don't want to talk to them. And I, I don't mean that mean. It's just mm -hmm. because they don't, you know, you'll have the ones that complain about anything, right. no, no matter how hard. I mean, we put a lot of effort into our league shot, which is why I think we have such a good league base. When my son was around, my son, you know, he's 27 now. He's lived in the CPA world, that accounting world that I did years ago. So now he gets to, to work those long hours and do it. But when he was around, my the person who does my lanes, Brian, who was the old owner's son, he stayed on with me, which was a big part of my success too. Him and I offset each other. I'll give the world away and he'll charge for everything he can. So we kind of have this really good combination and whether I'm, you know, we really, we offset each other really good. And we talk about things before I talk to him about, you know, some mm -hmm. of the things we're thinking about doing in the future. I keep him involved in everything because he knows, because sometimes he has something and he'll come to me again, the humility, even listening to your employees, this is too hard to do. Or we can't do that because of this or, okay. All right. And then you, you try to figure out another plan, maybe, you know, my plan right now is working on trying to get the food out that it's correct, that it's to them on a timely basis, and we get it to the place that we want to get it to, because sometimes our league bowlers don't even know what lanes they're on, so we're trying to deliver mm. food. And they're not at that lane, and right. it's, we're trying, so there's some things we're looking at for there as well, but mm -hmm. we tried a couple things that didn't work, so now I have to try something else. So. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, now, you try until you get it. <laughs> yes, and I do. But my my the old owner's son Brian, who's just great. Well, he does the lanes, so he does the shots. So he's very particular. He's always checking the oil machine, making sure there's no malfunction, you know. And then when they change a part in it, he has to sometimes adjust it which is, it's well beyond me and I'm not going to get into the detail. I don't even know yeah. it all, but it can get overwhelming. Where he's, you know, he has to tweak things. And and it's I always tell when he's up to it because he comes in to me and he goes, put your shoes on, Renee. I'm like, oh, Brian, <laughs> I need you to check something. So he bowls and because he bowls in a whole different angle than I do. He has a whole, I go in like kind of middle and swing it. And then when my son was around, he would play outside. So he would look to see how all three of those shots would do. And then he would mm. adjust it accordingly. Yeah. So most of our people who do come in for league will tell you that we're very consistent with our shot. Right. And that's what the bowlers like. And I believe that's part of our success is we will always try to, you know, look at that and try to be, you know, you can't always get what, you know, oil machines malfunction, just like your cars do. You don't mm -hmm. know what's going to happen and you don't sometimes know it did happen. You know, sometimes you could be driving in your car and something's not working and you don't know <laughs> right. it. And you mm -hmm. find out about five miles later, but <laughs> it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> you lost all the water in your radiator. Mm -hmm. It's gone. So. Yeah. But I'm sure they really appreciate the, you know, the attention and detail that you guys put into it because, you know, mm -hmm. not every center is going to take that level of care. And so, you know, it shows up because the way you take care of that spills over to almost anything else, right? That's why the, the bathrooms are always a good signal to the rest of the center is what you do there kind of shows what you do everywhere else. Yes. And if you go out to our reviews, you'll see all our reviews are how mm -hmm. clean. I just brought on the cleaner who was working for me part time, asked me to come on full time. And I'm like, I could definitely use you full time. <laughs> now the place is really yeah. sparkling. You thought it was yeah, clean yeah. before. You should see it now. <laughs> Right. It's great. <laughs> it goes a long way. Yeah, it goes a long way. I'd say that's top three things that people look for. And I would rather have him on my payroll than outsource that any day of the week. I just, mm -hmm. maybe in some people's eyes, be putting him on the payroll, you pay the extra taxes, you pay, you know, the unemployed. But to me, it's a small amount to be able to say, hey, today I need you to do this. And today we got this going on. I believe, and it's I'm not a control freak, but I just believe it gives us better control over what we need done and when we need it done. When you have contracts, plus, plus the buy-in, yeah, you know, like the buy-in, they have like some ownership, like this is my house kind of thing. Like 
that that you know the extra tax that you might pay is has, pales in comparison to that you know the result that brings. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. and you, they they do. He just does a great job. So you just to me, I think it, it it's well worth it. It, yeah, well, it worked out for us anyway. Yeah, no, that's nice because, like, yeah, like, like I was saying, that's a huge thing for people when they're evaluating their experience. But I know, you know, we're, we're coming up to the top of the hour. I, I know you have a, a lot of things to do, so I wanted to get to the uh, future before okay. we run out of time. So, where you think see things going for the next, you know, eight, twelve to eighteen months, both maybe for J Lanes as well as kind of the industry overall. For us, for the next couple months, we're looking at upgrading our software. We're excited about that. Upgrading all the pin pads. We have, our system is over five years old now, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to looking into the kiosk and putting that up and seeing how that's going to play into our food plan. That's, a, mm-hmm. that's another hopefully solution to our problem to where the to the food being done correctly and oh, yeah. you know yeah I, I think it'll help. So I think with, that's one of them. Uh, we have a couple of ideas that we're looking at um, that we might have to look into laser tag. That's been a while. We might have to look into upgrading some of that um, stuff. And that's kind of on my plate for next year to look mm-hmm. into that and see what okay. either, either do I want to replace all of them or do all the vest and the software, or do I just want to try to upgrade it? So I'm not, mm-hmm. that's going to be a decision that we'll probably yeah. look at later on. Which system do you guys use? What's that? What system do you guys use? Helios laser. Okay. Yeah, hmm. Helios from Zone Laser Tag. They're okay. Helios. They were Helios mm-hmm. at the time. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's great. I mean, I have fun when I get in there, so I like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you guys have a nice setup, nice arena. It's small and cute and very, mm-hmm. con- but it's nice. It's you know, I brought my kids up there, which is my husband came in one night to pick them up, and he's like. Kids are running all around. He's like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, "Well, there's Aunt Jack, Uncle Jack over there, and Aunt Shirley's there, and my cousin Vicky's there, and my cousin Rocky's over there. And my kids aren't going anywhere." Right. And he's like, "Oh my <laughs> gosh!" Bad. Everybody was bowling. The men bowled on one side, the women bowled on the other on Wednesday night, and we were mm-hmm. all, you know, everybody was fine. And I believe that experience with me is going on to other people as well. And I kind of, I love when I see people bringing their kids in, they're comfortable, they're letting them, you know, have a good time and have fun. And I always say that, you know, I'm glad that I'm in that industry because we're in the fun industry. Right. And I don't know, that's kind of cool. I mean, we have a lot of fun. So where the industry is going, I, I see it. I see us from Bull Expo and talking to other people, everybody kind of is just riding the wave right now. I think after COVID, people have a whole new brand new view of how they look at their downtime or they mm-hmm. want more downtime. And I, I think that's part of a lot of us who were up in 2021, 2022, especially, I think. And then, you know, some of us are still up you know, and, and I just think people no longer want to work every single minute of their day anymore. I think they're mm-hmm. taking time away and going out and having fun with family and friends now. And I think we'll continue to do that. Mm-hmm. And hopefully we we'll just see our industry growing and going in the right direction. And it's just amazing to be part of it. I love going to Bowl Expo. I go to Winter Summit. I have a great time. I get... I walk away with something new every time and it's not always in the seminars, even though they're good, but it's Mm -hmm. not always the seminars. Sometimes it's that luncheon that I sat next to somebody that I did not know with a center somewhere that I didn't even know existed. But that little bit of information that they give me is very helpful. So yeah, it's crazy how open proprietors are, right? Like some industries, I think people, you know, keep their secrets a little more, but because most towns only have one center, maybe two, they're just so right. open. They're just like, hey, you know, take this. I hope it works for you. And, you know, they just share everything. Yes, they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was, I was kind of taken back in the very beginning. I was amazed and I was very touched. And I, I think, and that's, that was all part of the success really too. Mm-hmm. Listening to them, listening to bowlers, listening to people, listening, you know, to my employees. I, I think sometimes that's all, we're all, if I ever write something out, 
I usually at the end of the year after New Year's Eve and we've ha all had a very long night, I always put out there, it's always we, it's us, it's, you know, it's never me or mine, it's yeah. not, it's everybody. Everybody contributes to the whole, it just is. Everybody plays their part, they do it well, and they've done it very well. I am very fortunate, my mechanic has been there for 37 years, he knows the machinery like the back of his hand. Yeah. He asked me what I'm going to do in the next six or six years, but I'll worry about that when it gets closer. Right. Exactly. <laughs> It'd be time for string machines. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time, Renee. This has been a really good conversation. I think, you know, if there's anything people can take away is the fact, you know, listening and, and seeing and getting ideas from other people and, and implementing it. Like I said, I think that's a, a superpower of yours and a great contributor of your success. For people that they, you know, are interested in, in reaching out and maybe learning, you know, some more maybe about some of the accounting ideas or how, you know, your experience with laser tag or, or food and beverage, any of that stuff, is there a spot you'd uh, send them to to connect with you? Oh, they could shoot me an email at jlanes at comcast.net. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I yeah. have, again, here's the bowling world. I have Excel schedules. I won't mind sharing. <laughs> um, I will take out my personal data, but mm -hmm. I will share the show with you and give you a format on the, uh, the profit margin on the food mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff, what we dealt with. So that's helpful. Super generous. Yeah, really appreciate that. And I can vouch because I've connected you with other people too and, and you know, be able to help them and just talk them through certain things because you've done it. Yes, I mm -hmm. know. And I appreciate that. They were yeah, nice people. Very nice mm -hmm. people. Yeah, Absolutely. I like that. Cool. Well, again, thank you so much, Renee. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to, you know, if I, are you going to IAPA? I am not this winter year. Summit. I'm going to Winter Summit. I'm bringing Sean. Case. Oh, I love it. <laughs> you got to drag him out every now and then. <laughs> I do bring him along, but you know, mm -hmm. he's great entertainment. He really is. Exactly. Yeah. Plus who's going to accompany you to the casino, you know? Yeah. Well, <laughs> well yeah. In New Orleans, it's right down exactly. the street. So that'll be fun. Okay. Well, yeah. Worst case scenario, I'll, I'll see you at the summit. Absolutely. And, mm. and first, thank you so much for, for asking me. And I was honored to be asked to do something like this. I don't, uh, for my opinion, to count is means a lot to me. So thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. We're honored to have you. Uh, like, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Uh, yep. Yeah, talk soon. Take care.